And as I understand it, we're back live. Hello, welcome. Glad you are with us. Glad you've been sticking with us throughout our marathon day of excellent game demos. And we've got another one coming up for a little game called Hawken, if you hadn't heard about it. Jason Hughes is here to tell you all about it. He's the producer at Adhesive Games. And Jason, I, I mentioned if you haven't heard about it, I'm, I pity people who haven't heard or seen this game in action because it just looks so good. Awesome, thanks. Thank you very much. We're really glad to have you on the stage here. We've got a couple guys off here doing some mech combat because that's what Hawkins all about. Uh, and right in the cockpit right away, we get the sense that this is a pretty fast-paced game. Yes, I would say that it definitely is. Uh, we're first-person mech shooter, and we're actually free to play. Our open beta is coming up 12, 12, 12 of this year, so it's coming up fast. The footage that we have, as you said, it is actually a live demo. This is gameplay that is going on right now. Um, it's fast-paced, but there's a lot of strategy to it as well. I think people are going to have a good time once they get in the game, uh, get in the match. All right, so it's we, the fast pace is immediately apparent. You can see guys running around. You, you're seeing this is, but this is a, a another stalwart feature of the mech game is the customization. The customization is really, really big for us. That's, a, that's something that we really want to nail. Uh, and it's something that we're really emphasizing this week at E3. We haven't talked a lot about those details, uh, but people are going to get their hands on it and see just a taste of what we have to offer. All right. Now, well, let's talk about the basic sort of structure of this mech to start out. Like, this is a bipedal mech. It's moving pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, are most of the mechs that shape and size? They are. Well, we have different classes. So size is one thing. Um, they're all on two legs for now, um, but uh, we have a light class, we have a medium class, uh, and then we have a heavy class as well. The class that you pick, that all impacts uh, how fast they move, how much, uh, how many resources they can carry, energy, and, uh, and the amount of hit points that they have. So they and all kind of very, very different. Yeah, you can be loaded out with. Right. Now, you mentioned energy. I was reading about uh, the game, and energy... There's no ammunition that you have to pick up. You, no your ammunition. guns have unlimited ammunition. Unlimited ammo. But you are restrained by the energy resources you have available. Well, we keep unlimited ammo. It helps keep the pace of the game going. Uh, but we do have to worry about, uh, players do have to worry about the heat. They do have to worry about the heat they're generating with the weaponry. Uh, uh -huh. You can see some of the meters on the on the screen as, as, the, as a player fires, the meters go up. And uh, you just have to make care, uh, be sure to not overheat your mech with your weaponry, or your system shuts down to cool off. What was happening there? Were we getting a little like healing or a repair kind of thing? All right. So the mode that we're looking at right now is siege mode. It's one of our primary modes of the game. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a really uh, stellar mode for the game, and what people are really going to remember. The object of the game is actually broken up into several stages, sort of mm -hmm. different tiers. Actually, the overall goal is to destroy your enemy's base. That's the overall goal. Destroy the base, but. Usually in a base destruction mode, get into the base or... That becomes a different story. That's, yeah, that's a little and tough. And that's where the energy comes into play. So as you run around the map, the first tier, that first goal of, uh, of siege mode is to gather energy. There are enemy uh, energy depots where you can go and actually fill up, uh, fill up energy in your mech and then you take it back to your base. What you saw in that moment where you brought it up was if you take down an enemy mech, you, they drop what they were carrying and then you can just go there pick up what they were carrying and then you can take it back at yours. Okay, so you're doing this sort of harvest thing and also trying to prevent your enemies from doing it. Exactly. Uh, and it looks, we've got clearly, wow, that's a lot of explosions. <laughs> uh, we've got clearly visible guns on both sides. Right. Uh, are this sort of your two primary mounts are your arm? We have weapons? a, I exactly, we have a primary weapon and a secondary weapon. The primary weapon is uh, is the one that you use most, most often. The secondary is definitely more supportive. They do a lot more damage, but uh, but you can't fire them as, as often. We do also have an item system okay. um, and items that people can uh, that they can equip. Uh, grenades, turrets. You can drop a turret down, a rocket turret, uh, a homing missile turret, and uh, we have EMP blasts, shields, a lot of different ways that uh, to support the player and how they like to play. Now let's talk for a sec about what about the visuals we're seeing. Uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of effects happening. Uh, Chat member loser fail to win says my PC is so ready for this. <laughs> but what if someone looks at it and has the opposite reaction and is like, nah, I don't my know. My PC is not ready for this. Yeah. Well, what I will say is we want Hawken to be in as many hands as possible. We're really proud of the game. We want people to be able to play it. That's part of a part of why we want to go free to play is so that people can just download it day one. They can have fun and start playing. Mm -hmm. So we're well aware of. The scope of PCs that are out there, you definitely have a wide variety of, of power, CPUs, whatever your selection may be. So we want to make sure, we are definitely aware of that. Uh, optimization is a huge focus for us. Okay. We want to make sure that uh, you know that everyone can play. 
We also have, uh, we had an announcement not too long ago with Gaikai, uh, so that the players will be able to play the game. Granted, we're focused on the PC version right now, mm -hmm. but players, if they have the Gaikai client on a, on a tablet, an Android tablet, they'll be able to play remotely uh, through the cloud and, and stream that. So it really is a core thing for us. We want as many people to play as possible. So PC specs is indeed uh, an important detail for us. Very cool. Uh, now you mentioned Gaikai and playing on a, a tablet, something like that. That that brings to mind uh, control scheme because not a, you know you sort of expect a, a keyboard mouse to play with this, and you guys actually had showcased at one point a dual joystick custom rig that's like real hefty and has a bunch of switches and stuff like that. What is the spectrum of inputs you're allowing for Hawkins? So the primary, I'm a keyboard and mouse guy. Mm -hmm. I, I love PC gaming. That's what I primarily use. Uh, we do support uh, the controller right now. Just a, a regular USB controller, wireless controller. Okay. Uh, and that's actually what we're showing with Gaikai. Uh, you can control it on a tablet. Just sit down. Use a controller. Nice. Uh, and then what you saw were some pics of a prototype of a, of a, a dual stick Hawken controller. I can't guarantee it's going to make everyone anyone like play better, okay, but uh, sure. it'll but certainly be more immersive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So this are we still in the? Is this team battleship? Is that are you're, you're defending a team battleship? I'm seeing right. in the bottom left corner. So here's the next tier okay. of siege. Excellent transition. Look at that. Thank you. I've been doing this for a few days. <laughs> we have. Uh, once you get enough energy and you bring it back to your base, your team launches a battleship. As you can see up here in the air, if you were to look up, you can actually see the battleship flying across the battlefield. There it is, right there. It rains down destruction upon the opposing team and also starts dealing damage uh, to the enemy base. Is it auto-targeting? Like, if you're exposed to that, it's going to shoot you if it's, you're an it's, enemy? It's going to shoot down. So okay. it's almost like another opponent that's sort of flying over the battle. Uh -huh. Now, both teams can have ships up at the same time. They could be passing in the air. All depends on how the match can go. But this is what takes the action to, uh, to a unique point. Up there on the screen that you can see right now, a little bit over there to the left-hand side, is an anti-aircraft missile silo. So that becomes a little bit of a control point. Is that, that's this little that thing, is thing right that here, right there. big barnacle-looking. Now, thing. players can take down the battleship on their own if they want to. Uh -huh. They can focus on it, fire. They're not going to do as much damage, however, if they're, unless they're holding this control point. Oh, he's dead. What happens is if your team is holding that point, missiles launch out of that silo and start taking down the enemy's battleship. At regular intervals. At okay. regular intervals. So, so if you've help. got maybe more light, lightweight mechs going on, your firepower is not, you're really not taking down that battleship by yourself. You're not taking down, I mean, the weapons we keep pretty balanced, uh, independent of class. Okay. Uh, we try to focus customization more on, uh, we keep the weapons separate, and we keep, uh, so any mech can use any weaponry, uh -huh. but the mechs themselves, we actually have a pretty robust customization system, not only visually, but when you get down to the, to the nitty gritty, you pick, your, uh, you pick the mech pieces that you want, you can mix and match pieces, you can equip the items that you want, you pick up the weapons that you want, but our upgrade system is really robust. We give you points as you level up, and you can allocate those points either offensively, defensively, or to movement, and that allows you to really customize the way that you like to play. We also have some attachments, some modifiers that you can mm -hmm. that you can throw on as well. So you could have, oh, you could technically have all the mechs you own look exactly the same, have the exact same weapons, but based on how you upgrade your mech, they will play in completely different ways. Totally differently. Now, talking about all these different upgrades, modifications, weapons, etc., uh, seems a natural place to ask a question about the free-to-play nature of the game. Sure. Is, that, is it in that customization area and those unlocks where being able to pay for something is going to come into play? I mean, we're still working on the monetization. We have, we have our plans. We have what, uh, you know, what we're structuring. Right now it's, about, it's actually about balance before we talk too much specifics about what we're you know, going to have available. Yeah. Right now there's so much that comes into balance uh, to make sure that we're not pay to win make sure that everyone can have fun. You can jump Those in. Those three dirty words. They're, they're, dirty, <laughs> they're, they're, they're scary words. I know it scares a lot of people. And we want to avoid that. We want everyone to have, to have fun. So there's normal progression. There's a way that you can unlock things normally. Where monetization falls in that, we just want to make sure that uh, oh, regardless of the way you want to play, you Sorry, can, I just saw an anti-air missile. I had to come in because it looks there so cool. Yeah, there it was. Through the sky. Um, okay, so you guys still sussing that out. Uh, you know, your little release is a little ways off. But release is a little ways off, as I mentioned. Uh, our open beta is 12, 12, 12. That's this year. If people go to playhawken.com, you can follow all the information on the game. But more importantly, you can register to try to get into the closed beta, which oh, we yeah. haven't announced the date for that specifically yet. Look at that. Siege match is over. What a, what a oh. beautiful way to end such a match.
Nice explosions. You know? But if you register on the site, try to get into the uh, to the closed beta. That'll be up a little bit before the open beta. Get in and start playing before anyone else. Playhawken.com. Play and that's Hawken with an E N. And don't worry if your keyboard doesn't do the backwards K. That's fine. Uh, that is fine. We got a bunch of questions coming in from chat and from email. Bob, Bob the Cat Lol Bob the Cat wants Lol. to know about melee weapons. Melee weapons. Right now, we don't have any melee weapons. Um, no dice, right Bob. Now, Sorry, lol. <laughs> See, the, the law, uh, unfortunately, no, <laughs> mo no melee weapons at the, at the moment. But what I do want to say, though, is our weapons are very focused on uh, short range, medium range, long range, mm -hmm. and I never want to rule anything out. There's so much in the game that we're actually still fine tuning, that we're still tweaking. This is what we have for right now, but I don't want to rule anything out. You never know what the future will bring. So I encourage him to uh, pay attention to what's going on with the game and, and who knows what comes up. Stay tuned. Okay, uh, another one here from Matthias. Uh, is there, asking about a context, is there a story or a solo campaign as well with Hawken? Or are you focused on the multiplayer action? You're focused on the multiplayer, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a story, that doesn't mean there isn't a universe, that doesn't mean that this doesn't exist as something that's, that's, that's really big to us. Mm -hmm. We may be focusing on multiplayer, uh, there are other avenues where people are going to be able to explore the story. For example, uh, just actually earlier this week, uh, we ha we released our live action video teaser okay. uh, by uh, that was directed by uh, Jerry Flattery, who was uh, is an unbelievable director and, and artist. Uh, nice. really good with the with the engine. So live action trailers is kind of a thing. These a days. live it's action trailer. Sort of a resurgence of those. If people haven't seen it, I recommend just, uh, doing a search for it or even go to our site. It's 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 amazing. But it's an example of how we want to explore the universe and how we want to bring people into that. There's a lot. There's a, there's a lot there. Neat. Uh, now, are we in? What are we in a different mode now? We're, we are, we're collecting energy, so this is back at the beginning stage. Looks like the the beginning uh, did uh, did another siege match. So this is uh, what you can see right there that you saw a moment ago with some of the collection points. That's where you can go and collect energy. You can see energy source there as a text. Uh, this is. And this certainly encourages some uh, some feisty battles over this spot, as you can see. And we're just spending some time in the air there for a second. So I'm curious about, and here we see some jump jets in mm -hmm. effect. So jump jets are adding some verticality. Other mech games add some like horizontal boosts. What what kind of mobility do these mechs have? We well, have your normal, your expected movement, but uh, but players when they use the shift key. They can boost forward, they can dash to the left, dash to the right, uh, and then also perform a quick 180 degree turn so they can see who, what's behind them. Uh, also with the space bar, there's the jump functionality, but then also a press and hold, uh, and you can hover in the air, you can boost in the air. So yes, the big focus is to feel like you're in a big, powerful, lumbering mech, but at the same time, we need to give people the option to get out of the way of danger pretty quickly, or perhaps get to a better advantage point. Mm -hmm. now, now we're getting another look at that customization screen. So this screen is uh, our mech bay. It's sort of where you can, uh, on, on another part of the game, you can enter the garage, and that's when you can do all your customizations. Spend all, as, as much time as you want tweaking As much tuning. time as you want tweaking, pick your weapons, how it performs, uh, and then that's where you save it. When you go into the match, whenever you start a match or after you die, it takes you back to the hangar. You can pick which mech that you want that you've created to go into, uh, to go into battle with. How many different mechs can you stack up in your garage? We are still tweaking that. We have uh, six right now uh, that we preset for people with E3. So that becomes just a matter of balancing. Okay. I got to ask about this little splatter alien crap thing. Like this, you're in some, what appears to be an industrial area, but yes. you've also got these stacks that seem to be almost like apartment buildings on yeah. top of it. Like what is the whole aesthetic here in this world that you guys are going for? Well, what we have is a uh, really big focus of the team is that um, Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, like those are big inspirations because they're not too distant future. They feel very real. They feel very gritty. It's something that people can relate to. They can see, okay, this isn't happening now, but it's not like something that I can't necessarily imagine happening. So the world that we have, we have a variety of levels, a variety of different places that they can, uh, or, or, or places to focus on. Uh -huh. But uh, it really is about industrialization uh, over, uh, it's uh, corporations fighting over resources. So everything is very, dirty, uh, it's overdeveloped, there aren't very many resources left, there's there's, there's no water anywhere, that looks like the LA Wash actually. So there's no, no water like anywhere. deciduous forest level that we're going to be having mech fights in? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's more about it's this more about combat. seeing when there's yeah, there's more to come, but there's it's more about feeling real, but giving people 
a very science fiction feel that uh, that really draws them in, but isn't off-putting at the same time. They can, they can. I think players can see this; they're interested by it, but it doesn't seem something too crazy at the same time. Yeah, it, I mean, it definitely provides a provides a stylish backdrop for the combat for sure. My eye keeps getting caught by little little design touches uh, in the periphery. Although front and center a second ago was like a giant bubble shield with. Strange and magic goes. triangles, and there it is again. What's that thing? That is a shield. That is one of the items that people can drop. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, the uh, one of the turrets as an offensive item. The shield is an example of a defensive item. You can either drop it on the ground, run into it yourself. That'll help with uh, decreasing and blocking uh, incoming fire. But if you want to, you can also shoot it on a teammate, and what happens is they're able to run around the map with it around them. So it looks... It's uh, it's sort of it's the trade-off. You can either use it for yourself, you're stationary, or you basically give it to a teammate, and and they're a little bit more. Let's uh, need so the abilities can be a little flexible depending on how you put them into use on, on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. All right, one more question before we close out. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, it just went away. Come back. Uh, totally missed it. Totally brain farted that one out. Oh, yes, here it is. Oh, okay. Uh, player count in okay. a single match. What are you guys? Where are you at currently? Is what do you have different modes that are different sizes right now we have five versus five and that's what we felt was appropriate for e3 and what we're showing uh, we don't have a technical limitation for the amount of people in a, in a in a match it has nothing to do with that it actually has to do with the pace that we want for hawken and what the map can support for those amount of players uh we we, we tried for example this match if you start throwing six people seven people in the pacing of the match becomes out of whack. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel right. You have yeah. less players. That's not quite right either. So that's what we're using to balance how many how many players are supported. So nothing. I, I'm not wanting to say anything final sure. at this moment. It's in it's in flux as we iron out and balance over the next coming months. Okay. And just quickly, who is this little robo friend? I've seen him a couple I'm times. Glad we're able to bring that up. <laughs> so what we have this is our uh, repair ability. So if you're damaged, get yourself the cover. Hide behind something, hold down the C key, a drone comes out, starts doing the repairs on you so you can get back into battle. That's neat. Of course, then if somebody spots you, you better get back into your back end. You'd better, you'd get better, moving. You'd, you'd better get away. You cannot repair faster than you can take damage. All right, Jason. Hawken, uh, you guys are opening a beta in December of this year? It is. 12-12-12 is our open beta date. You go to playhawken.com. You can register for the closed beta, which is coming up a little bit before then. And uh, I'm really excited about uh, everyone's response. We really want everyone to jump in and start playing as soon as possible. Well, we're super glad you could come and show it off here on the E3 stage show. Uh, it is looking really good and Thank really you. fast, just fun. Um, I think I'm going to get to that website a little later on. <laughs> Thank you Thanks so much. Again, it was Jason. a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And now, folks, we are queuing up a demo for Dead or Alive 5. But first, Carlos Rodela has more to explore at the Turtle Beach booth.